ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Jeremy Smith. I'm not on camera today, guys, because you can't always see my pretty face. <laughs> if you guys remember, back whenever I did the review on the Nikon D5600, I talked about SnapBridge, and I basically complained about it. I'm pretty sure I also complained about SnapBridge in the D500 video, and probably also in the D3400 video as well, because basically it was broken for a very long time. The good news is though, Nikon, they finally seem to have this working 100%. It seems as though a lot of Android users didn't have difficulty for quite some time, but those of us using iOS had issues for a very long time, but now all that has been sorted out. If you have one of the earlier Nikon cameras that support SnapBridge, you definitely want to go in to your camera and make sure that you have the latest firmware version installed. So if you go into your setup menu, you can go all the way down to the bottom and go to firmware version. And you want to make sure that this, is, this C firmware is on the latest version. You can go to Nikon's website and make sure that your camera has the latest firmware installed. Today I'm using the D7500, which is not a very old camera. And so there's no update necessary on it. Looking at all the Nikon cameras that support SnapBridge, they all basically work the same. So if you have a D850 or if you have a... Uh, D7500, a D3400, a D5600, the procedure is going to be the same on all these different cameras. Since these companies are constantly updating the software, from here on out, I'm going to put a uh, title in the video to let you guys know that this is the 2018 version of this video because I'm going to have to start updating some of the videos as time goes on. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this process. Oh yeah, of course it goes without saying, you also want to make sure that your smart device has the latest version of the app installed and that you have all of your iOS updates or Android updates done. To get started with this process, <clears throat> also in the setup menu, you will find an option in here that says connect to smart device, which is right there. We go to OK. And then once that's done, we can just go and select start. Now, you can put a password on this if you want to. For this demonstration, I'm not going to be doing that. So we'll go ahead and go to start, <clears throat> just like this. SnapBridge launches. I'm going to go ahead and launch the same thing on my phone here. So go there, we'll go to SnapBridge, just like that. And at this time, we can go to where it says pair with camera, like that. And then I'm going to hit OK on the camera as well, just like this. Now, <clears throat> you can go ahead and select you know, what range of camera you have. Um, but I've noticed that oftentimes, <laughs> as it did just there, it goes ahead and detects the camera. And you can see it show up immediately. So I'll go ahead and tap on D7500. And yes, for all those that are curious, yes, I will be doing a review on the D7500 but um, I haven't gotten to that just yet, but it is coming. Okay, so we've gone ahead and done this. I can go ahead and go to understood on that. They're gonna start connecting and becoming friends. Uh, let's see, then we can go here. That looks good. Then we get a little box that pops up on our smart device and it shows the 7500, so I can go ahead and tap on that, just like that. And now at this point, a code shows up on the camera screen as well. We want to make sure that the code on the camera screen matches the one that is on the phone screen. If it does, you can go ahead and tap pair on the phone screen, hit OK on the camera, and the process continues on. Okay, so pairing complete, connected to camera. Now they are best friends. At least as best of friends as a camera and a phone can be. Okay. And okay over here too, just like that. Now, it gives us an option in here to download the location data to the camera from the phone. So basically you can do some geotagging that way. This is exactly why I think that GPS in the camera is uh, a bit old hat at this point. I mean, in my opinion, this works much, much better. If you wish to use that, you can turn this on. I am going to instead turn it off for now. You can 
re-enable this in the app later. And then it asks us if we want to go ahead and synchronize our clock data. And that's something that I always do, so I'm going to go ahead and go to yes on that and do OK. And it says done. And now we have these two paired. Now, if you wanted to go in and change any of these settings later on, you can go into the app and where it says auto link options, you can actually tap on that. And basically this auto link at the top, if you turn that off, that just stays, uh, disables all these options. But if you have it on, you can actually go in and kind of like select different things. You can do the auto download. Um, you can have the clock synchronization again. And then once again, that's the option for the, uh, for the location data. And then you have power save options there that kind of times out uh, the connection. Actually, I'll read this to you. What does it say? To save power, device will suspend links running in the background. If it's out of range, blah, blah, blah. So that's on by default. I typically leave that on. The other cool thing about this technology is that the camera basically can send photos to the phone even when it's turned off, which is pretty cool. On a camera like a 7500, basically like basically on any Nikon camera ex, uh, SLR except for the D3400, you have the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. And it's a low energy Bluetooth, so basically the connection doesn't use as much battery life. I'll go ahead and take a few photographs now and show you how this works. Take some lovely photos of my wall there. <laughs> you can notice as soon as I take a photograph, you guys will actually see that we will see some activity happening over on the app. So you can see that little, uh, that little uh, indicator doing its thing there. When I tap on this, here's some images that I transferred previously of a really beautiful model who had a great Coke bottle figure. Um, but anyways, there's the images that, that I just took there. I'll take a few more pictures. Let me move the camera. I'll take a couple more shots for you guys to see. So yeah, as I go in here and take photographs, you will see those images show up immediately on my smart device. Now, by default, it's going to use that Bluetooth connection. The Bluetooth doesn't transfer nearly as quickly, but it uses less power. And that's kind of the default thing that happens. So you can see those images slowly show up there like that. Now, <clears throat> let's imagine <clears throat> that you've gone out and you've taken a ton of pictures on your memory card. And you want to be able to go through and just select certain images to transfer. And you want that to happen a little bit faster. So. I want to show you how that actually works out. For the time being, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to turn the uh, I'm going to turn the auto download off so I can do this demonstration. And I'm going to take a bunch of pictures real fast, just so we have a bunch on the card. Okay, that should be enough to get you guys an idea. If I do that and I decide to then go back and view these images, I'm going to go down to download pictures. What's going to happen here is instead of having the camera transfer over Bluetooth, which as you saw takes a little longer, um, it can do that in the background and not use very much power. But if you go into actually manually tell the camera to download the images, it assumes that you want the fastest possible connection. So it automatically switches to Wi-Fi. Whenever I tap that, it comes up and says that it wants to enable the Wi-Fi on the camera. If I go to OK, it speaks to the camera over Bluetooth and tells it to turn on its Wi-Fi, and then it intelligently switches the connection over. And this is something that works pretty well. So you can see it turning on the uh, Wi-Fi right now. There it goes. And this is the part where iOS used to have an issue. Okay, so I've never done this on this particular setup, so it asked me to join the network. I can say join. And then there you have it. Now it's done. And then we will get a screen where we will see all of the images that I just took. And I'll be able to decide which ones I want to transfer over manually. And it won't take as long for those images to transfer. So there you are. We can see all the images I just took. If I were to start selecting some images here. 
we'll have some shameless Manfrotto and Rode Microphone product placement here. <laughs> no, they don't pay me, by the way. So I can do that. You can see how all these images download extremely quickly. I can do original size or 2 megapixels. Let's do original size, see how long that takes. You can see the original size takes a little bit longer. But still pretty quick because we're on Wi-Fi at this point. So that's how that works out. Now I'll show you another little trick that SnapBridge has up its sleeve. You can actually transfer images in the background, even when the camera is turned off. So I'll show you what happens with that. I'm going to take I'm going to take a few more photographs here. Okay, so I took a few more photographs, random things. And now I am going to go back and enable the auto download function. So auto download is on. And I'm actually going to go and turn the camera off at this point. So even though the camera is off, what's going to happen is it's actually going to <clears throat> be able to transfer these images in the background so you guys can tell. Okay, you guys can tell that the camera is indeed turned off. The Bluetooth indicator is flashing right now. Okay, we're going to go over to look at the images again. Now, <clears throat> these are some of the images that um, I previously shot, but what will happen is you'll notice that uh, up here on Wi Fi. I can switch over to the Bluetooth connection, so I'm going to go to yes. And whenever it switches to Bluetooth, it'll still do that, <clears throat> even when this camera is turned off. And I can go over to these settings, and we'll see if it will do it on camera for me. It seems to work very well off camera, and not so well on camera, because that's how things are. Now you can see that it has started to transfer. That connection has been made. So the camera's turned off. It's still it's still off, guys. But you can see that it is indeed transferring images to the phone. So it doesn't transfer at very, very quick, uh, you know, at a very, very high speed, but this is perfect for those times when your camera may be in your bag. You can still make a connection to it and have it start transferring things. So pretty cool how this actually works out. You can see everything starting to stream over. So it's nice to be able to have that combination of Bluetooth for low energy and constant contact with your smart device. And then you have the Wi-Fi to allow you to immediately transfer things if you want to do that. The other thing that Wi-Fi allows you to do with this setup is it allows you to remotely shoot with your camera. Now, with the D3400, you only have the Bluetooth aspect of this. You don't have the Wi-Fi. So unfortunately on it, there's no ability to shoot, uh, you know, like from your smart device. You can only basically use it to transfer images. Okay, so let's see here. We'll go over to this side. I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera on again. And I'm going to go into where it says remote photography. Once again, it wants to switch over to Wi-Fi to do that. So we'll say OK. And just like before, it's going to uh, initiate that Wi-Fi connection. <clears throat> The process goes much faster this time because I've already done this previously. They just did an update on the app itself and that update on the app allows you to actually have uh, manual exposure modes. So that's something to keep in mind too and that's very, very handy. So there we go. There, there she is. So now I can go in here and I can have my camera pointing at something. I can go in and I can remotely fire it. It will focus and shoot whenever I do that. And you can see that right now we're shooting in program mode. But regardless of where the dial is on the camera, we can go in and I can go to this right here. Let's see, I'll move this over a bit for you guys. I can go to this right here. And I can actually go in and change my exposure mode. So if I wanted to do something like manual, I can go to manual. <clears throat> I can go in and I can change all my settings. I can change my f-stop. 
I can change my shutter speed. I can change white balance. I can do all this from the app. And this is something that we couldn't do with any other Nikon camera over a wireless connection to a smart device. So it's nice to see this added to it. And it seems to work very well. <clears throat> if you want to, you know, do like the whole selfie thing. Let's see, we'll go back to uh, program. Say you're going to do yourself a nice family group shot or something like that. You can go in here. You can come down to the settings. And then you can go in and you can turn on your self timer. So that way you could remotely fire it and hide your phone. And then it would just count down and then take a photograph a couple seconds later. So it works really, really well. Anyways, guys, that's basically how this works. Um, if you have questions, write me in the comments below. If you have any feedback, let me know about that. Of course, if it's constructive feedback, definitely. I always look forward to reading those comments. And don't forget to follow me on social media. I am known as Photog J the Great uh, because, you know, I'm super modest and I need a super modest name. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, signing off.